There we go. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Kerwin with PassRider.com and CruiserNotJew.com. And um, I'm, I, I'm here to a friend of mine. I'll introduce him in just a sec, but I want to quickly tell you about what we're doing here. Um, a lot of us can't travel um, as yet. So what I thought was I would bring people from where I've met in the past and have them teach you something about their culture. Um, since you can't go out and experience your culture um, uh, like we did in the past, right? But we will soon. And so um, today I have with you with me uh, Leon Andy Norville. Um, he's from the Love Island of Antigua. And I met Leon when um, I went to, um, we had a trip to Antigua last year. And um, he uh, was one of the people that we, I got introduced to. This is and, what um, looks like, right? Look at how much food We're going to chat. But today we're going to teach you. We're going to teach you <laughs> what is soca. Uh, when you travel, music is one of the things that people like. And Leon Andy Norville does soca. So, Leon, welcome to the show. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for having me. Um, Karen. Excellent. Good to have you here. Um, so how are things in Antigua at the moment? Uh, everything is um, pretty much quiet for the time being. Um, as you know, we're on curfew, or uh, I'm not sure if you know. Um, we're currently on curfew um, because of the COVID-19 okay. um, outbreak. Um, fortunately for us, our numbers have gone down good, um, good. and is going down. So that is, that is a good thing here for us, but we, we are still on the curfew for the time being gotcha. um, to ensure that there is no further spread of, 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 of the virus. Excellent. So what does curfew mean in Antigua? Um, basically, it is a restricted time period when persons are allowed to move around. Okay. So right now, we are on 6, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., that is the time that persons are allowed to move around. After 6 p.m., um, you, you basically have to be home. If you're caught on the road, you can actually receive a fine. I think it's up uh, to $5,000. Wow, wow. And I, and I mean, I, I guess people are actually um, listening to that. So that's, so that's really yeah. good. Um, all right, Leon. So just tell our viewers a little bit about um, who's Leon? Who's Leon Andy Norfolk? All right, so um, I'm Leon Norville. Um, I'm a soca artist. I am also a news reporter. That's you know, my day job. You know, persons can see me reporting the news. And outside of that, um, persons know me from the music scene as well. Um, I have a couple releases out. Um, I just released my, my, my first soca um, song for this year three weeks ago. But unfortunately, Carnival is cancelled this year. So. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> um, it, it, it's still a good thing that, you know, I was able to put out my music early. You know, okay. um, it's postponed until next year. So um, I have some time to actually push it and market it and stuff like that. Um, I'm 29 years old. Uh, my birthday is in a couple of weeks. So. Yeah. I'm going to be turning the big 3 oh soon. Oh, man. So are you Gemini? Taurus. Taurus. Okay. You're, you're, you're the, I'm, I'm Gemini. So I'm like probably a, a week away from you. All right. So yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you right behind me. Yeah, I'm a Taurus, man. Um, um, basically, I'm, I'm a very cool, laid-back person. I um, like going out, like spending time with my family and friends, um, like socializing, um, partying sometimes, betting. Stuff like that, um, I like reading, yeah, traveling, um, yeah. So I, w I would say that's basically me in a nutshell. <laughs> so, nice. so lockdown for you must be really difficult, right? Because you're the party guy. It is, it <laughs> is. But you know, um, after being on the this, I think this we started in like April. Yeah, it, it's been about a month. So, you know, I, you know, kind of got accustomed to now staying indoors now, watching TV, gotcha. um, reading, listening to music, writing music, stuff like that. Good deal. So you mentioned quite a few things there. You mentioned Soka and Carnival. So let's talk about Soka. What is Soka? All right. So Soka is a genre of Caribbean music. It basically came out of Calypso. Mm -hmm. um, so Calypso would be 
a more slower version of what soca music is and the music tends to have more emphasis on lyrics you know it tells a story um basically in regards to you know current day situation things that are happening in the country you know right. so politics the economy crime just different topics um that persons would like to you know bring an awareness to um and it's much slower yeah. So on the other hand is more up tempo it's more fast the lyrics are lighter and it carries more heavy beats you know so it is that kind of music that you know gives you a vibe you know makes you want to move you know, so. <laughs> so so which one is more so in, in antigua is it it's soca is the music in in antigua right? or is it calypso i mean which one is more popular which one is more popular? <laughs> um, that, that's a ticklish question to answer because Calypso music and as I say, Soka came out of Calypso music. So, you know, there's this respect for Calypso music. Um, you know, artists in general, local artists, you know, they, they pay homage to Calypso music. Um, soca tends to be a little more preferred because of its more up tempo. Um, as I say, it, it, it's a more vibey style of music, yeah, and you yeah, find that yeah. mostly young people gravitate towards it. But if you talk to the older folk in Antigua, you know they they love a good calypso song. You know, of course, they listen to the, the social commentary, and you know, you know, and it, it's really entertaining. Like if you see a calypso and you perform and you, you'll just, you know, yeah, it, it's entertaining. So for me, I would say soca. I, I don't know if I'm being biased because soca is what I do. But um, you, you could say half and half. Okay. You could, you could say that half and half. Okay, I take it. by persons who, who, who like Calypso, younger persons who like soca, and then they have persons who like both. Right, so. exactly, exactly. So, um... You mentioned also carnival. Uh, for the people who don't know what Antigua carnival is like, you know, in a nutshell, tell us what that is. You know, what time of the year it's held, what does it mean, and things like that. All right, so carnival in Antigua is held in the ending of August, the ending of July, I'm sorry, the ending okay. of July into the first week of August. And okay. it's basically a celebration of our culture. Um, and it takes on various different um, activities. It's about two weeks, and there's a focus on pageantry, um, mass, calypso, soca, steel pan. Um, so it's just basically us celebrating our culture, celebrating emancipation. Gotcha. Um, and you know, it, it's, it just comes together in, in one big festival for two weeks of nonstop partying and, 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 and mass playing and soca music and calypso music and you know it's a really really high energy festival and vibe you know so for persons who would have never experienced carnival um americans i know go to mardi gras in new orleans mm -hmm. but you can just think of mardi gras on a more big cultural level Gotcha. So, so when so you mentioned mass and playing mass for the audience who don't understand what is what that is, can you can you tell them what that is? All right. So mass basically is where we dress up in costumes, um, depicting various themes. Um, could be local, um, international, but it's it really ties back into the culture here in Antigua and Barbuda and. You basically wear these costumes and, you know, the costumes are decorated in sequins, feathers, beads, um, glitters. It's just a really, really creative um, display of, of our culture. And you parade through the streets, you know, behind of a truck. The uh -huh. big is on there and there's music playing and you're dancing in the street. And you're just basically celebrating and showing off your costume, and you know, to persons who are, you know, watching um, the parade as it as it as it happens. I uh, got you. So, um, and I, I think if I understand it correctly, you normally go to a band and you pay that band for the costume, right. 
and then you basically hang out with that band the whole day, right? Right. Right. So there's several mass troops um, and you can just sign up with whichever one um, you might be feeling. As I say, um, every year, different mass troops have different teams. Okay. You know, so this year, a mass troop may have a theme that is Atlantis. Something may have um, another, you know, theme. Gotcha. <laughs> Nature, you know, just for example. And um, you basically sign up with whichever one you, you feel that you know, you feel a connection with um, and you basically pay money and it's an all-inclusive experience. So right. you get your costume, you get um, drinks on the road, you get food and you get a goodie bag and your goodie bag will contain, you know, little perks okay. that, you, that you can use um, during the festival and on the road and stuff like that. Good. Well done. So um, there's a sports, now you understand what soca is and what carnival is, right? So now what I'm going to do is try to figure out how did Leon get started singing soca? I mean, what happened there? And he's quite good, by the way. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I started singing soca in 2017. Um, that is when I actually immersed myself really into the soca music industry. I... I started singing at the age of seven, and I was able to, when I got to high school, I joined the National Youth Choir of Antigua and Barbuda. Um, did a lot of shows with them, toured, um, went to a lot of countries um, with them. And while I was finishing up my final year at university, I decided that music is something that I want to pursue professionally. And which kind of led me to the first release, my first official release as an artist with the song called Body Move. And that was actually a song, while I was in America, I went to a studio there and there was a producer from St. Lucia who was working on the beat and stuff like that. And I was there in the studio vibing and, you know, I really, really fell in love with it. And I sent it to the artist that I collaborated with, Amanda Tappin. And when I got back home to Antigua that year, we both got into the studio here, we recorded the song, and I actually put it out as my first release, which was well received, you know, and I'm really thankful for the support that I got from persons here in Antigua, and you know, everybody that was a part of our project. And, you know, that was kind of the, the catalyst for me wanting to, to, to do Soka, because it is, our culture here in Antigua, you know, um, it's a form that I take pride in and being able to contribute to my country on, on that cultural level is one of the reasons why I decided to, you know, fully immerse myself into soca music. Well done. So did, did you, were there any obstacles with you getting in there? I mean, is it kind of you had to know people? I mean, what, what, what was that like? Um, just like with anything new, I think that there's always going to be challenges. Um, uh -huh. for me, I always believe it's how bad you want it and how serious you are about it, especially in the entertainment industry. Um, persons, new artists are always emerging and coming on the scene, but, um, you know, people will recognize and people will say, okay, hey, I see a new artist coming out or, you know, doing the thing, but it's, you know, how consistent you are, are how professional you are. Um, what does your sound sound like? What does your image look like? What does your branding look like? So um, for me, it was, uh, and I would say it was an experience, um, even up until this point. <clears throat> I mean, this would be my fourth year, actually, you know, doing soap music professionally. And there are a lot of hurdles that you have to, to, to overcome, a lot of doors you have to knock down, a lot of people that you have to prove your work to. Um, but in the end, I think it, it's all worth it. And when people can actually see you and respect your artistry and know that, you know what, like this person is serious or this artist is serious, then that is what kind of helps, you know, build you and catapult you to the next level. Good, good, good. I'm sure that the young guys who are watching this and um, thinking of breaking into Soka uh, appreciate that. So thank you. So um, 
what is the inspiration for your songs? Because you said, yeah, the first one was Body Mood. And the, what's it, the, is the newest one ba Baby Eye? Is that right? No, there's one that I released after that. It's called Malika. Malika. All right. Okay. So, so, so what, what's the inspiration for these songs? I mean, what do you just get up and go, all right, I'm, this is what I'm going to sing about today. What, how, does it, how does that start? It is a vibe. Is, is definitely a vibe and based on the producers that you're working with, uh -huh. um, that energy, you know, which is very, very important as an artist, you know, making sure that you surround yourself with the right persons and, you know, having a team that is really going to be there for you to help motivate you. Yeah. So for me, every song is a different energy, is a different vibe. And, you know, when you get into that zone with, with your producer and your writers and you, you actually start putting concepts together and, and, and putting lyrics to, to the beats and everything, it really brings the, the entire project together. So for me, it's just like when I, when I go into a studio session, you know, my producers, they will call me and they say, okay, I'm working on this. What do you think about it? Um, how you feel about it? And for me, basically when I go into a studio session, if, the beat doesn't capture me within the first 10 seconds, then I know that, okay, this is not something for me to work on because I, I don't like forcing myself into liking a production. Mm -hmm. So if I go in and it's just something that I'm not feeling or I'm not vibing with, I'd be like, nah, that's not for me. If there's some elements in it that I like to hear, I'd be like, okay, so I like to hear this, let's change this or let's do that. So um, that's basically how I, I get the writing process started. You know? Just basically building a vibe with the, the team that I'm working with on that particular track and then starting putting pen to paper after, you know, I hum a little bit because that's that's how I actually start writing. I would start going and I'd be like, and then once I figure out the melody, I start putting words to that you know, yeah. gibberish, basically. <laughs> and, until, I get, until I get what I'm looking for. Excellent. So um, I assume there's a cost to all this, right? I mean, how are you financing this? I mean, how are you doing in terms of, I mean, how, how do you promote the music? You know, I mean, how, how do you make money from it? All right. Yeah, there is a cost um, associated with it. Um, much of it, comes out of my financing, um, mm. as well as help from my parents and sponsors. I do have sponsors who contribute generously to, um, you know, helping to offset the expenses. Okay. And, um, you know, once, once that money is coming in, I'm able to, you know, start the recording process, pay the persons that I need to pay. And then once the song is done, uh, marketing is handled by Julian's Promotions Worldwide. They are a, it's a company out of uh, the U.S. and mm -hmm. Trinidad, and they basically promote soca music to the world. Oh, so okay. they, they handle my distribution. And, um, you know, once the song is released, you know, we have a full social media rollout marketing campaign, as well as sending it out to local um, DJs, radio stations and, you know, other influential persons within the entertainment industry who kind of help, you know, push the song and get it, get it into the right hands of people where it needs to be. And um, that, that's basically the marketing aspect of it. In terms of making back money, money really comes in through royalties, um, you know, from online streaming and downloads, as well as li live performances. So that's really where um, most um, local soca artists make their money from, even though some persons have endorsement deals as well that help to um, generate money for them. Gotcha. So if the people who are listening want to go find, I know they can find it on YouTube, but if they want to actually download a song and, you know, and, and support you, how can they do that? All right, my music is available on all major um, digital streaming platforms, Amazon Music, Tidal, Spotify, iTunes, um, KKBox, um, Deezer, 
whichever whichever one um you your subscription is to you yeah. can just go search in my name leon norville and you will see um all my songs um will pop up and you know you, you give it a listen you know thankful for the support guys you know download <laughs> share you know yeah all right good good because uh and I'll, I'll have some links to that so so people can can take a look at it it, it, it really is good to you know to help your local artists because um I've, I've heard lee and stuff and he's actually quite good um all right so let's see um what's your favorite part of performing <laughs> performing um for me i would be it would be just being able to be on that platform to interact with persons you know showcase my talent and the amazing thing is that when you're on stage and you're performing and you can feel the energy that the audience is giving you and you know that your music has hit home or is hitting home in that moment is just an amazing an amazing energy and you know for me that is the favorite part you know knowing that i can be up there and that i can be um interacting with you you can interact with me and you know just being able to reach persons who might not be able to reach me on a regular basis you know through social media whatever so just being there in person in front of them and seeing persons smiling singing waving whatever it is you know that that is really my favorite part of you know performing good deal good deal and the interesting thing is that as you started to talk about that your countenance changed you're like oh this is really what i like to do so that's really good <laughs> Well, I, mean, I, I would say it's what I like to do because performing for me, I would say, is the hardest part of everything that I do because I could jump in the studio, I could re record a song, I could shoot a music video effortlessly, but performing is just, it's a skill. <laughs> it's a skill and you, you really have to know your audience as well. Yeah. You have to know that, okay, I got to come down to come down to their level and I, and I gotta be able to connect with them. You really can't go and perform and be above them like that because you don't wanna lose them. You know, so the important thing is, you know, studying your audience and being able to connect with them and, you know, just being able to reach them because I feel as an artist and as a performer, that is so important. You know, people want to know that, you know, hey, I could relate to this artist. So, you know, this artist is, you know, so relatable. You don't wanna go above them exactly all right cool man thank you that's really good so um people can find your music on all the streaming services and we'll list them here but in terms of social media where can they find you and find out what's next maybe find out maybe they're doing a virtual carnival i don't know if you can do that but where can they find you on social media all right so you can find me on facebook at leon andy norville that is my personal facebook page my music page is leon norville you can also find me on Instagram at Leon Andy Norville and also on Twitter at Leon Norville. Right, I'm on right. Snapchat, but I can't really remember what is my Snapchat um, handle right now. But <laughs> I'll probably get it to you after the interview. All right, perfect, man. So, um, Leon, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate you taking our time on this um, Sunday afternoon to chit chat with us and teaching us soca because um, i've had to learn quite a bit you know though i am from jamaica but um i and i, I went to school in in barbados and uh, i was in trinidad um but you know i've never actually been to carnival <laughs> i mean definitely come when you get a chance like it's an experience and bring bring some friends with you too it makes the experience 100 times better yeah yeah well you know i mean this stuff that we're going through is going to pass. So yes. when that is passed, um, we can all go out and enjoy that. But I really want to thank you for um, coming on the show and educating thank us on, on, on Soka. Anything else you want to add before we go? Um, I just want to say, you know, thank you, you know, for giving me the opportunity to be a part of this, as well as thank you to everyone who has been working with me. Um, you know, over the last four years, um, the DJs, the promoters, um, my producers, 
my team just want to say a big thank you to everybody um friends and supporters as well can't forget them and you know i just want everybody to stay safe you know in light of what's happening right now you, know, you gotta stay safe stay inside and you know yeah all right Leon. thank you so much i appreciate it man all right thank you all right we'll talk soon all right thanks <laughs>